Did you all watch President Trump's town hall last night? Well, there was a lot of backlash or back and forth. Uh, and backlash. Uh, yes, between <laughs> ABC's George Stephanopoulos and the president about whether he downplayed the coronavirus, which, of course, the president was recorded saying back in February. Watch. Well, I didn't downplay it. I actually, in many ways, I upplayed it in terms of action. It would go away without the vaccine, George, but it's going to go away a lot faster. It would with go it. away without the vaccine? Sure, over a period of time. Sure, with time. It goes and many away. deaths. And you'll develop, you'll develop herd, like a herd mentality. It's going to be, it's going to be herd developed, and that's going to happen. That will all happen. But with the vaccine, I think it will go away very quickly. Okay, so there was another moment from the town hall that a lot of you are talking about. A black pastor from Philadelphia confronted the president about his slogan, Make America Great Again. Take a listen. You've coined the phrase, Make America Great Again. Right. When has America been great for African Americans in the ghetto of America? Are you aware of how tone deaf that comes off to African American community? Well, I hope there's not a race problem. I can tell you there's none with me. You could just go back six or seven months from now. That was the best single moment in the history of the African American people in this country. So let's chat about it. Is the slogan, Make America Great Again, tone deaf when it comes to Americans of color, Al? What do you think? Uh, I think it is, but I think it's not for me. And I think this town hall was great for Trump. And I'll tell you why, Sam, because since the beginning, he understood that he's not going to win over a lot of people that are on the fence. He's for dang sure not going to win over the people that are anti-Trump. So every political, every campaign stop, every press conference is a chance to talk to his base. And what he is saying is, hey, guys, I'm not racist and you're not either. I played this coronavirus well, and you guys all know it, and anybody else that's not on board now, they're not coming anyway. So he did this the way he's always done this. He's been, he was prepared for those questions. He pivoted to just like, hey, before the coronavirus, everything was great. He had all these things queued up and ready to go. So I think it was a home run in terms of him for his base, Erica. I don't think anybody else really matters at this point. Facts, Al. Facts. Um, and I think that's where we are at this point. People are speaking to those who are either in the same mindset or people who are on the fence based on maybe single issues. Um, when we're talking about um, just any time we ha have that slogan, make America great, we've been saying this from the beginning. It's very one-sided and it's directed towards a certain group of people. There's just no other way to have that conversation. And I'm glad that that, com that question was asked. Yeah, I mean, listen, I know I'm white and I benefit from my privilege, but I can't imagine if I was sitting in either Erica or Al's shoes, I mean, I'm offended for you. To think mm. that, you know, make America great again, considering our history, and a lot of it is very recent history, uh, when was it ever great for people of color? When was it ever great for the LGBTQ community? But um, listen, that is just my opinion. We are getting a lot of your comments in right now, and I always want to read them. I always want to bring in the other side. Let me bring in Susie on Twitter. She says, don't you realize this is a setup? George Stephanopoulos was a Bill Clinton advisor. He has handled the pan pandemic good. And then John just chimed in saying he took those questions like a man. Many of the questions uh, were not Trump supporters and rude to the president. So thank you. Like I said, uh, talking to his base. Yeah. He figured Listen, it out early. Great strategy. That's a positive.